What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Tizer MMA and today we will be doing who I think is gonna be champion at the start of 2025 in every weight class, okay? And I know what you're thinking, 2025 is a long way away and that's kind of true, you know, it's a year and a half, a year and a half or so. But um, if I was gonna do 2024, I don't think many belts are changing hands, you know? I don't think many belts are changing hands for the rest of the year. Uh, I think a lot of guys are still in their prime and they're going to continue to wit dominate their weight classes. But I think in 2025, some of them are going to get a bit old, fall off a bit, and also some young prospects are going to work their way up enough and they're going to have them title shots and they're going to be champions by then. So uh, I've got people's faces all around the screen. I'm going to drag them in and uh, put them where their champion status, I think, will be. So let's kick it off. We've got in flyweight, the 125 pounds division. Mohamed Makayev and Mohamed Makayev is a really good prospect okay he's British and he just destroys everyone he's got a really good grappling game and most importantly he's 22 which for an MMA fighter is very very young obviously I know your prime in flyweight is lower you you know you, you prime in your younger years because you're smaller but um he's just showing so much improvement and his stand-ups improving in his last few fights you can see that so uh, he is getting better. Uh, he, I think he'll continue to get better. And I think he probably wins every fight at flyweight for the time being. Um, and eventually, I think he's going to be good enough to beat the Morenos, you know, the uh, Pantoas of the division, whoever's champ then. Um, I think he probably needs to win about three more fights and then he gets a title shot or something like that. I think he's ranked right now. So, um, yeah, he just needs to stick in there and he will definitely be champion by uh, 2025, I think, because... Um, Brandon Moreno will be older, Pantoa will be older, you know, all these guys are kind of not at the latter end of their career, so to speak, but he would definitely be the the quicker, stronger guy, and obviously, seeing as he's a grappler, it's quite important, and also the cuts will be uh, much more tolerable for him, because he's younger, which is obviously a thing that some people forget about, so yeah, we're just going to keep it short and sweet with him, but um, yeah, I think Makaev will be the, the British flyweight champion of the world. Moving on a weight class, Actually, we're gonna we're gonna skip. Well, no, we're not. One thirty-five, Bannon weight. I think Song Yedong will be champion. Okay. Now I think Al Jermaine won't be champion anymore. I don't know if he'll lose that fight to Sterling or what. Obviously, I'd probably give him the advantage to win that fight. I think he's grappling is gonna be the difference there. But um, yeah, Song Yedong, I really do think he's championship material. The guy's so young. I think he's twenty-four, maybe twenty-five or something like that. But um. You know, he's been around for so long already and uh, he hasn't really took too much damage. Obviously, I know he had that doctor stoppage, but this guy's showing growth in every fight and that's the most important thing because if you're losing when you're 23, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You're not in your prime. You know, you're going up against veterans. Obviously, the Bantamweight is probably the most stacked division in the UFC. So you've got to give Song Yudong credit. Um, and yeah, his hands are insane. His grappling's improving. Uh, his takedown defense is improving. If this guy gets his takedown defense game perfected, no one's beating him. He's got cardio to go all day. His stand-up's getting better. His boxing's the best in the division. Leg kick, he needs to get them leg kicks going. Head kicks, you know, threaten, just threaten the body, spin kicks. Mix up the grappling, and then we'll have a perfect fire. He'll be so complete. And um, I really do think this guy's going to be champion by 2025. I think he can beat anyone in that division then. He'll, uh, he'll be near enough his prime. And he won't even be in his prime. That's the crazy part. In 2025, Sung Yudong will still be so young, he won't even be in his physical prime. And I think he'll be champion still. So yeah, that's how good I think he is. If not him, Sean O'Malley is a good shot. He's still young. Even if he loses to Aljamain Sterling at 292, he can still come back and win, you know, he'll he'll only have to get two more fights probably if he gets an, some knockouts, he'll get that belt, uh, the rematch for the belt, I'm sure, but um, he's he's there for sure, but um, Song Yudong, um, honestly, he's a hype trainer and his grappling's really good, um, obviously I know O'Malley's Jiu-Jitsu is kind of underrated, uh, we've seen it at like Jiu-Jitsu matches, but um, I just feel like Song Yudong is maybe the more complete fighter at this moment in time, or will be then. Anyway, so um, yeah, moving on, 145 pounds. I've gone for Ilya Tapuria. Um, yeah, February is a weird one because obviously Volkanovski is the champ there. Yo Rodriguez could beat him. I don't really know what I'm thinking of that. I think it might be Volkanovski's toughest matchup at February. But then again, that isn't even saying much because this guy just beats everyone easily. You know, he wins basically every round of every fight. Um, he, you know, he arguably, arguably beat Makachev which is impressive because obviously he's, he's a bit of a weight bully compared to him. 
But um, I think Volkanovski will probably retire by 2025. I think that would be make him about 36, going on 37. And honestly, he's got enough money. And uh, you don't need to be making them weight cuts at featherweight because um, that would be really harsh in your body to make 145 at featherweight. Uh, so, yeah, I just don't think he'll be doing it. I think he will have retired. And I think Tapuria beats uh, older Holloway. I think he beats... Um, I think he has a good chance against Rodriguez. I'd give about 50-50. But this guy's younger, and he's got really good grappling. He's improving every fight. That's just the key to this. If you're young and you're improving, I think you're going to be champion later. Uh, this guy's power is insane. He doesn't give up. He's shown that in many fights. A lot of fighters, they get hit, and they give up. They roll on the ground, and they're just quite happy getting TK. and think, oh, I'll come back next fight. I'll be better prepared. This guy's been dropped in multiple fights. He come, He came back. He fought for it and he won. So for me, that's championship material right there. You know, not every fighter in the UFC has that. And that's why most of them will never be champions. But Ilya Tapuria, I'm a big fan of him. One of the most entertaining fighters to watch. And um, I do think he'll be champion by 2025. Moving on. <laughs> Lightweight. I think I might have... Oh, hang on. I think I've lost him. Oh, well, anyway, in the meantime, we'll do welterweight. 170 pounds. I've gone with Ian Gary because um, this guy, I mean, his name's, you know, the future Ian Gary and I couldn't agree more. He's really good. Um, he could get knocked out of nowhere. That is a potential thing. You know, he's there's a lot of valid strikers in the world away. You know, you've got Shavkat, Leon Edwards. You know, these guys, they have one punch knockout capability, whether it be kicks, elbows or any stuff like that. So um, obviously that is a bit of a worry for him. And his chin is kind of bad. Like he's not like, he, I wouldn't say he's chinny. But his chin isn't like, oh my God, he like he eats big shots for breakfast kind of good. You know what I mean? Like this guy, um, he can't take, he can't, he's not part of the we, though, society um, and he won't be anytime soon. But if this guy sticks to his game plan, obviously I, knew, I know he was talking about Dana White with some like six fight game plan, fight a guy and work his way up the rankings. Honestly, if he picks his fights well, I think that can work out for him. Uh, I think there's a lot of beatable wel welterweight prospects and they're only going to get older. Uh, so yeah, I think he's a new wave of welterweight, and um, I think this guy's, I think this guy can do six, uh, in what one and a half, two years. I think this guy can do them six fights and them five fights or whatever. Um, you know, he might get fast tracked if he gets a few head kick knockouts and stuff like that. But um, he did say he didn't want to rush it, but money talks. That's all I'm gonna say. I think he probably will rush it if he gets a chance, just because of the money. Moving on up to one eighty five. You're probably thinking, I forgot about him. I haven't. Here he is. Oh, hang on, 155, right person. We've gone for Islam Mahachev. Um, I still think he'll be champion. I think he'll retire in 2025, but I don't think he'll retire at the start. I think he's got a few fights left in him. I think he's probably going to fight about four or five times more and then call it quits. He might move up to welter, mate. welterweight because um, obviously I know those cuts are really hard on him. He's a really big dude for the division. Uh, I think he'd probably be champ at welterweight as well. I think he probably... He could beat uh, Edwards. It just depends. I don't know. If Edwards can get up, he'll probably lose that matchup. It's just I don't know whether Edwards can, but you never know. I mean, obviously, he didn't really struggle uh, getting up against Usman. So it's just it's hard to tell how good he is compared to bigger guys. But um, if he stays in lightweight, I think he's going to be champion there. I think he'll still be a fighter in 2025 at the start of 2025. I do think he probably will retire before the end of it. But this guy's not getting beaten anytime soon. Um, you know, I was looking at the prospects earlier, and the only person I think can beat this guy right now is Benil Dariush. And Benil Dariush won't be getting a rematch at it, so he needs to win first time. And I honestly, I don't think he's gonna be the favorite for that. Um, I think Islam's got about a seventy percent chance of winning that, and Benil's got a thirty percent. Benil's got hands. Uh, he's got some unorthodox grappling, so he could catch him in submission or something like that. But you never know. But I'd give the athleticism to Islam, which is probably why I'm thinking he's going to get the job done. And he's also got underrated power in his hands. Uh, so, yeah, I just don't think anyone else beats him. I think Fitziev is too small. I think for a lightweight, Fitziev could, Fitziev could probably make featherweight. I know he's quite buff, but he's really short. And I just think he'd get taken down, kind of like Drew Dober against Makachev. I just think that's how the fight would go. You know, he'd look sharp in the feet, fast, quicker than Makachev. I mean, he just get taken on and subbed. But, um, yeah, so that's that. For 155, I really do think Islam, as long as he stays there, I think he wins basically every match except the Dariush match. Moving on up the card, we have... Hang on, let me find... 
I don't know where my fight is. Yeah, here he is, 185. Hamza Chamayev, I do think he'll be middleweight champion by then. I don't know if Israel Adesanya will have retired, but I would probably take him to maybe sub Israel Adesanya in the first round because we all know that Hamza Chamayev's grappling is very, very good. And Adesanya might not have the best frame for it. You know, I think he's a bit of a nightmare matchup for Adesanya. I think he can probably sub him in the first two rounds. And if he doesn't, I think he's maybe in trouble then because, you know, we don't know how good the cardio is. But um, yeah, this guy, as long as he keeps active, he can win. But um, he's having a bit of an activity issue at the moment, I've noticed. Um, he needs to get in the ring. He's 29, bro. Get in, the, get in the octagon. You're 29. You know, you're in your peak fitness, peak physical prime, I assume. Uh, you've got, you know, four, year, four or five years left of your prime. Bro, just go in there, make as much money as possible, try and get the belt. I mean, who knows? He might go up to 205. I... The reason I didn't put him at 170 is, honestly, I don't think Kamza Chamayev can make 170. And as you all know, the older you get, the harder it does get to make lighter weight. So, you know, if he couldn't make 170 a year or two ago when he was using the towel method, how is he going to make it now? That's a good question. But um, Kamza's grappling is good. He's improving. His striking is good. He's got power. He's got a decent chin. And his cardio, well, it was okay. It was okay. But I imagine at middleweight, because he doesn't have to deprive himself of loads of food and uh, water and stuff, I think uh, he will be much better in the cardio department, which is why I'm backing him to be champion in two years. I think he's going to continue improving. And I think middleweight's actually quite a bad division, so I think he'll do well in it. And obviously, you know, the young guys in uh, middleweight, people that still be around in 2025, you've got Whitaker, he'll probably be around. I think he might beat Whitaker, I don't know. And then you've got Duplessis, and obviously I think he didn't uh, annihilates uh, Drukas Duplessis in one round submission. Uh, moving on up, who have we got here? We've got Magomed Ankhaya for the light heavyweight champion. This guy's 30 right now. He's good. He's still improving. 30 for a light heavyweight. He's still quite young. They do go till their latter 30s. And um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised this guy isn't champion right now. It was all a bit of a weird one. Um, he was he fought Jan, I think it was for the belt at two eighty two. It was a draw, so they couldn't decide what happened, and then ended up here. Hill fought Glover, and then um that was what happened after that. So, yeah, I think Magomed is gonna be champion. I think he's got good enough ground game. His ground game is really good. Uh, he's got good uh top control. He can keep people grounded. They can't really get up when he's on top of them. He's a big guy for the weight class. Um, he did have issues with Jan's leg kicks, which may, maybe makes me feel like his striking is his weakness, which we all know. But if he doesn't improve it, this pick is a bit invalid. But um, I'm assuming he's going to improve his striking because it, throughout fights it's looked better. But to be fair, Blahovic is a really good striker. So, you know, he was slightly outmatched in that fight. But being slightly outmatched by Blahovic isn't really shameful. Obviously, he's a world-class uh, light heavyweight striker in his own right. So, um yeah, and he did, in my opinion, I think he did win that fight, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so that's why I'm going with uh, Magomed Ankhaya. I think he'll improve. Uh, I think he beats uh, Jamal Hill. I really don't think Jamal Hill should really be champion. I get why he is, but um, I think this guy beats him nine times out of ten or eight times out of ten, unless he gets caught. And um, other than that, I don't really think there's many threats in light heavyweight. Johnny Walker... He's got the talent and the skill, but his chin lets him down, so that's why I can't put him in, because his chin's a liability. He probably would just get caught at some point in his career. But um, yeah, so that's the light heavyweight division sorted. Moving on to the final division, we've got heavyweight. I've gone for Joe and Almeida, and I was torn between two heavyweights. I can't decide whether it's going to be Sergei Pavlovich or Joe and, but um, I thought, in my mind, who wins when they fight the most? If they fought 10 times, who would win the most? And I've gone for Joe, and I think he'd win the majority of the fights, which is why I feel like he will be champion and Sergey will not. Because Sergey's tactic of basically trying to knock, knock them out in the first round, there will come a fight where eventually that doesn't work for whatever reason. You know, you get you trip and you get taken down, and you know you start to gas or you just throw everything at a dude and nothing's landing clean for some reason, and um, you know he can't. You know, I, I'm a big Sergey fan. I love him, you know, really entertaining. But that fighting style, eventually it won't work in one round. I don't know who it won't work against, but it may be Jelton, to be honest. I think if this is, Sergey is a nightmare matchup for uh, 
Sorry, Jelton is a nightmare matchup for Sergey. I think Sergey will probably be champion before, but I think Jelton will be champion by 2025. I think I really fancy Sergey, uh, Sergey's chances against Jones. I think he's got an, a good chance of beating Jones. I think he could probably retire him. Uh, I think Jones is going to retire after his next fight anyway, whoever it may be. And um, then I think it's just going to be a. I think Sergey is going to get that belt. I think he beats anyone else. Uh, Jelton Almeida is a few fights away from a belt. I think if he wins one more by finish in the first round, he'd probably get a title shot or maybe two. So yeah, I think Sergey will be champion first, but I think this guy is probably going to beat Sergey, which is a shame to say because obviously he's so fun to watch. But again, Jelton, you know, he's a talented dude. He's done what no one else in heavyweight can do. Someone else to look out for is Tom Aspinall. He's coming back, but again, it all just depends on how he looks after that injury because that's a really serious injury, the knee one, to sustain. So um, I'm not hedging my bets on him being as sharp. I don't know how he's going to perform. He might be slower. He might look even better. I just don't know, but he's in the mix. It's definitely he's in the contention for the champion by 2025 because he's also young. But um, yeah, so that's heavyweight. So thank you for watching the video, guys. I just want to say uh, cheers for the support. And uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, you know, leave a like. Comment down below what you think. Obviously, I've, I'm going to have not put everyone as your favorite champion and stuff like that. And you're going to think of others. So just li uh, leave some stuff in the comments and tell me what you think. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.